Psalms 35 is the 35th Psalm of the Book of Psalms in the Greek Septuagint version of the Bible and in its Latin translation in the Vulgate. This Psalm is Psalm 34 in a slightly different numbering system. I want to hear here down at uh, Nish Mash. Ten verses is part of Nishmash from the Psalms. Hold on. Nishmat, Hebrew, or Nishmat Kolchai, the soul of every living thing, is a Jewish prayer that is recited. Following the song of the sea during Pazuki de Zimra but before Yishtabak on Shabbat and Yom Tov. It is also recited during the Passover Seder in some traditions. 1. It is prized by Halakach authorities because the concepts covered in this prayer are basic to Halakha. 2. Nishmatan. Yishtabak are in some ways considered to be one long prayer, abridged just to Yishtabak on weekdays when there is no time to recite the entire prayer. 3. In this prayer. The word Nishmat, the combining form of Nishma, breath that begins the prayer is related to the word Nishama, soul, suggesting that the soul is part of the breath of all life. 4. The theme of the prayer is the uniqueness of God. 5. Some hold that answers to certain issues of Jewish law, Halakha, can be derived from the prayer. Nishma, the commandment, do not lie idly by the blood of your neighbor, requires a person to rescue another, as he sees is in danger. But from Nishma, it can be seen that one who is not physically present where the danger is taking place is exempt from performing any rescue action. Six, some examples of this include the obligation to rescue a person from a burning building in one's own location but an exemption from the obligation to donate an organ when doing so can save a life, though doing so is still permitted. 7. Nishmat is considered one of the masterpieces of Jewish liturgy. It is seen as a journey of self-discovery, describing God as a source of prayer. 8. Nishmat is believed to have been composed in the early a Moric era or earlier, in the Talmud, Rabbi Yochanan bar Nafsha, 180-279 CE, states that Nishmat should be recited during the Passover, Seder after Hillel, 9. This has been current practice at least since the Geonic period, c. 800-1000 CE, 10. While this is the earliest known reference to the prayer, there are opinions that it may be older. 11. Nishmat became a standard part of the liturgy by the time of Saudi Gaon. 12. The earliest mention of it as part of the Sabbath morning service is in Seder Rav Amram written by Rav Amram Gaon in the 9th century CE. 13. In Mishnah Torah, Maimonides 12th century CE states that it was recited on the Sabbath in Sephardic practice. Its use on Sabbath morning was controversial in Europe during the early medieval period. Several Ashkenazic rabbi Several Ashkenazic rabbinic works explicitly defended its use, including Mazur, Vidri and Kolbo. 14. The exact author of the prayer is not known. Based on the following prayer, Shochen Ed, some scholars have suggested that it was authored by a man named Yitzchak Isaac, with a wife named Rivka, Rebecca, based on the acrostic arrangement of the verses, but others have dismissed this idea. 15. Some scholars have suggested that the author's name may have been Shimon, Simon, from an acrostic within the prayer and have considered this could be Shimon ben Shetach or perhaps the Apostle Peter, whose Hebrew name was Shimon, which would place the date of authorship in the 1st century CE, 1617. Alright, so, I thought that was interesting. I mean, uh, I don't think any of that stuff really pertains to us. That's all, you know, Ju Judaism, and uh, I mean, it really got me that there was uh, talks about... um. 
what's his name there? Halal, right? Halal, isn't that uh, Lucifer? Right after it says uh, this prayer is supposed to be, uh, yeah, uh, where was it? The Passover. Did I go too far? Oh, yeah. Because I think uh, Lex Will broke this one wide open that this was the. Sure, I'm saying I'm doing that correctly, but what got me was this right here, right? Start getting into this character. Saadi bin Yosef Gaon, Arabic. Saadi bin Yosef Al Fayumi. Said bin Yusuf al Dalasi, Saudi bin Yosef Aluf, Said bin Yusuf Raz al Kal, one Hebrew. Alternative English names, Rabbi Nu Saadi Gaon, our Rabbi of Saudi Gaon, often abbreviated RSG, RASAG, Saudi B. Joseph II Saudi Ben Joseph or Saudi Ben Joseph of Fame or Saudi Ben Joseph Al Fayumi. 882-890 seconds 942-3-4 was a prominent rabbi, Jewish philosopher, an exegete of the Geonic period who was active in the Abbasid Caliphate. The first important rabbinic figure to write extensively in Arabic. He is considered the founder of Judeo-Arabic literature, five, known for his works on Hebrew, linguistics, halakha, and Jewish philosophy. He was one of the more sophisticated practitioners of the philosophical school known as the Jewish. Kalam, Stramsa 2003. In this capacity, his philosophical work The Book of Beliefs and Opinions represents the first systematic act. Attempt to integrate Jewish theology with components of Greek philosophy. Saudi was also very active in opposition to Karaism in defense of Rabbinic Judaism. Okay, so... Oh, I was going to murder that. It took forever if I would have tried to read that. But I'm going to get to his, uh, his the statement down here towards the end. Let's watch this. Is the hill of God the hill of Bashan? A hunchback mountain is the hill of Bashan, meaning it is unfit for God's divine presence. Why leap ye, ye hunchback mountains, that mountain wherein God desires to dwell, i.e. Mount Moriah in Jerusalem? Even the Lord shall dwell therein forevermore. Saudi Gowns Commentary, 27. So... I had to stop and ask myself, okay, where's this Mount Moriah, or whatever you pronounce it? Where's this mount at, right? And I wasn't ready for what I got. Okay. I knew it would do this. I just looked this up and it's. Yep, I knew it would do this. Hold on. It's not giving me the. Here we go. See, I, I, I've learned to either screenshot things or send them to uh, other people right away because the first time I looked this mountain up, it gave me this. It's in Nevada. Right, uh, which also goes to because remember, um, remember the uh, I did a video when I was trying to point out um, some of the stuff in an old documentary about trains and what they you know discussed when they were making their way to San Francisco, basically coming from the East Coast, cutting across to the West, right? And um, I like watching old documentaries. I like watching old films because they say stuff that you'll never hear mentioned anymore in today's movies or documentaries. It's all covered up. So I like to listen to that and then take what they say and go look into these, look into things, right? I use them not as entertainment, but as reference points. But there was a name they brought up and it was the uh, Sahara or Sierra, right? Because I, I always get it confused. I always think about the uh, the GMC truck. I think it is because it's got the same name. But um, when I looked at it, it's in the desert, it's in Nevada. And I looked it up, right? 
And I'm like, uh, uh, I don't understand the translation for the name because nobody was really giving a translation for this name. And in a roundabout way, I found it when I was looking into uh, what's his name? Um, shoot, what's that name? Uh, Montezuma and the halls of Montezuma in Texas. Um, it gave a translation for that name, uh, Sierra, right? And it mean it is, says, um, uh, yes, it is here. Now that desert, uh, Sierra, is in Nevada. Now you remember before when everybody was all over Utah, Utah, Utah. I was like, hold on a minute. Wait now. Okay, let's look at how the Mormons have traced this thing down. I wasn't too satisfied with it. You know, I was like, um, I still felt like we were ignoring Nevada. I felt like we were ignoring uh, Arizona, and we're definitely ignoring New Mexico. So I was like, just wait on. And then we found, was it Raman uh, or Raymond, however you pronounce it? Um, it's in New Mexico. So there's places here. They, they got these places we should look into as well. But anyways. Here it is. Let's see. Let me see if there's anything they'll give on it. No. <sighs> Just uh, everything. Everything is in. Um, shoot, what is that? Uh, it's freaking. Um, that's German. <laughs> they tell you they're not it's not to be confused with the with the mountains I mentioned in the Bible identified in the book of Genesis or in Judaism identified with the temple. I don't know. Sounds like uh, we're in the right lo it's all in the right location. The four encompassing states that are in the shape of a uh square, right? And in legalese, a square is a court and a court is where judgments are held. Let me see. All right, we'll get back to the Psalms 35. Contend those who contend with me. For David himself, judge thou, O Lord, them that wrong me, with overthrow them that fight against me. Take hold of arms and shield and raise up to help me. Ah, Remember that verse, right? Remember verse 2, because uh, later on, this is another one where they, they seem it's just Jesus talking through David. Bring out the sword and shut up the way against them that um, persecute me. Say to my uh, soul, I am thy salvation. Jesus didn't say that, right? Did he? He didn't say, I'll tell it to the Creator to do that. Remember, he, uh, he said all that, oh, my God, my God, why have you forget, forgotten me? And, and uh, why have you turned your back on me and all that stuff, right? So I'm just saying, let them be confounded and ashamed that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and confounded that devise evil against me. Let them become as dust before the wind and let the angel of the Lord stray them straighten 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 them sorry so you want some blowing in one direction once they've been dismantled disarmed and destroyed you know not to scatter to the right the left or any other degree straight gone right uh, let their way become dark and slippery and let the angel of the lord pursue them so even those that try to get away let you know let there be blinders put in the way where only the angel of the lord can see through right for without cause they have hidden their net for me unto destruction. Oh, this sounds like legalese and all the, uh, uh, the, the things that they've done to hide um, the path for us to get out of, you know, trouble, right? Uh, with their lawyers, with their judges, with their sheriffs, with all of it, right? With their, uh, um, with their scholars. Without, without uh, cause they have um, up... Oh, upbraided my soul let the snare which he hath not know not come upon him and let the net which he hath uh, hidden catch him and into that very snare let them fall but my soul shall rejoice in the lord 
and shall be delighted in his salvation. See, again, this has nothing to do with Jesus. This is all 